Okay folks, this episode is all about Soviet infantrymen. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, oh no, 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 just please let me wash them and dry brush them. I don't know how you feel. I mean, I must have painted oh, about 60 or 70 bases, not including redundant bases in Flames of War. And I probably want to do about another 40 before I'm finished, but they're at least a lot more simple to paint than, for instance, Russian, uh, sorry, German infantry. Now, as a result, the palette's a lot smaller as well. So, let's get started with the uniform, which is the bulk of the figure. And one of my good old favourites, old wood from Panzer Aces, with a highlight colour of Iraqi sand. Now, you can also, if you wish, have an intermediate kind of shade colour, which is US Field Drab. So it would be field drab, leaving some of that visible, and then Panzer Aces and then Iraqi sand. But you'll get a darker finish. So I've decided in this instance to go with the lighter finish. So we want to be observing the shape of the uniform as we're going here in order to create the right shape and shade and contrast. So it's likely to take two coats before we get an opaque enough colour because it's quite light. That's one reason why I sometimes use that intermediate colour. And you notice I'm kind of just painting lines on along the ridges. The high points basically, the peaks of the folds leaving the, the depths of the folds in shade and then you can join them up, join the lines as opposed to join the dots if you see what I mean and as always you have to remember to keep going around the figure it's three dimensional, no one's going to look underneath it I suppose but you'll make sure you haven't left anything that somebody can see if you take the time to go all around it. And don't leave too much shade shown because you don't want it to be too stripy. Now you can see in the tunic just refresh the brush a little. Working around the features that are on the tunic. You've got to remember to get into these little areas. If I accidentally get some paint on the other areas I can easily fix it. But you have to remember to get all these little bits folks. Don't leave them as little areas of shade because it will reduce the shape off the figure and it'll also just make it too dark. And now I just want to do the back of the arm here so you can see. That means there's not too much shade in there. Get right down to the bags that are there and then over the top. And then I'll do the arm before I finish the rest off camera because this is a good example when I talk about painting lines. Right, so I'll just try and move myself around so the camera can see this. So there's a fold there, a fold there, a fold there, one there, and one there. So that's me got the basic shape, I then have to fill in. So you see I'm painting along the back of the arm. And then I'm going over the top of the arm, it's, it goes all the way around, remember. Don't want to believe in this. 
and too much shade. Then I'll do the same on the other arm. You can see there's a collar. There's the top of the chest of the tunic. And there is the top of a pocket. And then we're starting to create the shape. So I'll just finish all that and give it another coat and then we'll go into the highlight. Okay, so that's the base colour of the uniform down. I'll be careful to look underneath the arm in here. It's going to be the, the great coat, so that's okay. But there's little spaces there, like on the shoulder, as I showed before. So you've got to remember to look at all these, use it to get the right shape and prevent too much uh, shade colour remaining. So, highlight colour, <coughs> excuse me, and then Iraqi sand. Just placing this on top of the shade colour wherever I need to create the contrast. Excuse me, the angle's a bit off here just now, folks. Right. Just going to keep repeating this around, always looking to get on top of the dark areas wherever possible. And then the tunic, brush is getting dry there. So we can accentuate this feature and then draw the brush along the bottom of the tunic. That will help separate it from the trousers. There's a bit under here that needs the same. And I can actually see some more along the trousers on the front. Oh, I missed that. That's gone a bit off. I'm going to just put a line down there, across there, just to help give a bit more um, shape because that's quite a large area and um, large unbroken area and then we have collar chest of the jacket pocket of the jacket and then arm lots of little lines painted on is what's needed here Refreshing the brush, keep the paint flowing off it. Then I'm going to have a line come down there, going up there, and then just over that. Let's catch this line here. Now in the back of the arm, it's a bit too much paint on that brush. Let's just catch that highlight. Then a little bit under the great coat. Refresh the brush. And we're away again. There you go folks, that's the basic uniform on shaded and highlighted. So next up we're going to do the pouches and bags. So the base colour is green grey, not to be confused with grey green. And highlight colour is Panzer Ace Splinter Camo Base. 
So we're going to follow the same principles as we did with the uniform. We've got to find the shape, leave the shade and prepare the, the highlight. Now you've also got to look, I mean, see that there, that's all part of the great coat. But here we have a belt. So let's get some colour on the belt. Then we have some kind of pouch or water bottle, not sure. We're fine, we've found it. It's now got a shape. Oops, the brush is a bit wet there, folks. Right, so let's just give this bag the shape that I expect it to have. There's the top flap, and then the main body off the bag, remembering to go around the side to make sure we're not leaving too much shade. And then the strap. Bearing in mind it goes over the top. Now, it's hard to say where it actually goes from that point onwards, so I'm going to paint it as if it's tucking itself under the collar. Just like that. Now, I can't see anything else, so that's us for the, the green grey. So we're on the highlight now. Splinter camel base. And over to the insane detail brush. Or rather what's left of my insane detail brush. So this is a very strong highlight, so just now that's far too much paint and far too dry. So just a little touch on the belt. Then on the strap. And then we can accentuate the shapes of the main features. So we're just catching the edges here. There's not a lot of internal shade on these objects. So we just need to work around them. And there you go. It's quite a nice bright aspect to it as well. So next up we'll go into the great coat. So great coat is flat earth and my good old reliable Panzer AC's old wood. So just load the brush. Now you can put as little or as much work in this great coat as you want to be honest. So you can leave some internal shade there. Where it pinches, you can also leave some internal shade. Don't forget to go over the top of it so you're not leaving too much shade. And it's not much happening around the front here, so we'll just follow it over. But once again, in here, there's a bit more going on. So if I start as close to the uniform as I can, and then draw another line. Underneath that line, I've left some shade to help 
show that it's a rolled up fabric. Right, try and stay in camera, sorry folks. And then we've got the ends of it down here. So little knot just inside there so I paint that. So that's now ready for the highlight which is the old wood. So careful lines that's what we need here folks so So just observing the shade that I left in place before and then let's see we've got to get into just refresh the brush again got to get into that knot that I painted just get a spot highlight on that and then we need a few lines on the bottom there And it's as simple as that, folks. But it's still quite a nice saturated finish. So, next up, we will do the grey areas. So, the grey areas are the boots and the metallic parts of the rifle. So, I've given them a black undercoat because grey doesn't sit good over the dark brown. And then I'm going to be using German grey and London grey. So let's start with the with the rifle saw. I want to observe the shape of the rifle, the shape of the bayonet here, and leave some of the black to help give it some shape. You can always look at some pictures of the weapons in question if you're painting them, if you're unsure of the exact shape of things. I've done that myself, you know, what bits wooden, what bits metal. But that's it for the, the rifle. Now for the boots, we're just going to try and give them a bit of a highlight try and give them a bit of shape so I'm just going to catch the front there with the toes a couple of lines on the side a line along the side up and down the back just like that nothing particularly fancy we want them to look black with just a bit of highlight so the German grey does that and there you go. So when it comes to highlighting with the London Grey, we're actually only going to do the rifle. Right, just float the brush. So we want to accentuate these shapes with just little spots or lines for highlight. So Got the end of the gun there. Got the bayonet. And the other side. I also see them either as part of the bayonet or part of the muzzle, I'm not sure, but if I can catch that. And catch that. I'm not sure if did I put I did put Jeremy Grey there, yeah. Right, so you go, there's the rifle and boots for metallic and grace. 
So the rifle stock is going to be flat earth, which is more of a shade in this case, and game colour heavy ochre. Um, Panzer Ace's new wood is also a good colour that I would use for that too. So let's load up some flat earth. And then just follow the shape of a rifle, working around the hands, leaving some shade between things like fingers, uh, the hands and the, the stock. And that's as ready now for what's going to be the main colour and it's a nice bold eye-catching colour so that the rifle sits out distinctly from the rest of the figure. And see I'm just on the stock there just sort of painting Scratch little lines to try and leave a bit of the shade colour shown. But elsewhere there's there's not a, there's not even a lot of rifle to see there, so I just want to leave a bit of lining like I would. For instance on the uniform. There you go, that's a nice bold, oops, excuse me, hopefully I wasn't drifting off camera there, that's a nice bold rifle colour. Now I, I go for a bright colour from the rifle straps, I use German Camel Beige World War, World War II, and then Deck Tan. If this colour was too similar to the base colour of the uniform, I might decide to go for a darker colour. As it is, I'm okay with it here. So that's all we need. Well, actually, I'll tell you what, I'm going to try and just go into that shaded area a bit more. There we go, so I just got to leave that to dry. Whilst it does, I'm going to put the shade colour for the helmet, which is German Camouflage Dark Green. So I'll come back and then do the highlight on the strap. So the rifle strap highlights deck tan, nice and simple. You don't have to put the highlight right the way along the entire length of it either. You can just pick out a few areas and that'll catch your eye. So, the helmet, I mean, I put the dark green on because it's a better shade colour for the, whoops, here we go, the main colour which is medium olive. The highlight colour is then going to be German camo bright green. So. I'll just get that on the palette guys and get it on to the figure. So I will typically start at the base. Just paint around that. And then go to the rest of the helmet. 
being careful to leave a line of shade. Paint's a bit dry there. I want to leave a line of shade between the main body of the helmet and uh, the edge of the helmet. Right, and that will just take a minute to dry and then I'll have the German Camel Bright Green just for a tiny little bit of highlight. Just catch the edge of the flat of the brush and then you'll need to use the point of the brush. And you can do the, the highlight across there as well. And there you go, that's the helmet done. So Pretty much my bog standard skin palette, German Camo Pale Brown. Game colour bronze flesh tone, anything similar will suffice. And flat flesh, just a nice bright highlight colour. So let's make a start on the face. So Quite often the way you do a face will be determined by how it is sculpted. These guys are very flat, so they have a nose, a chin, and cheeks. So I'm just going to pick those out. Very simple. And then in the hand, He's working the bolt on the rifle, the other one's just holding the rifle. So just paint that in completely. I'm going around looking for a thumb. And then bringing the rest of the, the hand around. And that's the base colour, so now we've got to the main. Skin colour, the bronze flesh tone. So we're going to follow that, the shape of the face again. Nose, chin, cheek, and cheek. And then fingers, let's try. I'm going to switch to the smaller brush actually here. This Larger brushes losing its point a bit. So we'll just load up the insane detail brush and then let's try and get some fingers on these guys. Okay. Now there was only really able to find three, but you know what, it's good enough for Homer Simpson, so it's good enough for me. Then we got a thumb. Back of the hand, and then I just really want to catch there. Oops, to show a finger, a finger, and then thumb, and then around the side of it. And there we go. Time for the highlight. So just a little spot highlight on the nose and the chin and I try to go down the cheek. 
catch that thumb, catch that finger, try and catch the ends of those fingers, and the top of that thumb. And that is that. So it's not too much to these guys other than the vast numbers of them. The painting isn't too much. You've not got lots of complicated things in the way of um, equipment and webbing and such likes. But there you go. Soviet Rifleman. I'll show you some flamethrowers that I did recently. Everything is pretty much the same except they don't have rifles and they've got flamethrowers but um, I'll let you see them to see what some completed ones on the base look like. So here is some completed uh, figures. Now these are uh, the flamethrowers um, as opposed to the riflemen but I completed these recently and they are in exactly the same style as the examples. As the example rather that, that I just did for you. So that give you an idea of the the shades, the highlights, like the depth and the uh, the contrast that you can get. These guys are a new addition to my Soviets. I've not actually, I've had them for a while, but I've never painted flamethrowers. I've never um, used them in any of my lists. They always seem to be a bit expensive point-wise for what they were. And I, I don't know if I'll use them very much in the new version of the game. But I thought now's the time. Get them painted. And the basing I've done roughly to match the basing of the two completed Soviet companies that I've got. These guys are on a swampy basis, so I simplified them a bit compared to the original ones that I did. There's no, pur no puddles of water. But you can see the bright um, pouches and they're using that green grey with splinter camo as a highlight and the nice bright green metallic areas that are painted the helmets and the uh, flame throws let me see better from this side Lighting's not fantastic just now. 